Okay, I think we are uh, good to go. Let me pull this up here. Okay, God's Wrath, Chapter 1. As the sun beamed in the sky, Jonathan Summers strolled casually down the sidewalk to work. He entered the lobby of the Casey Insurance Company. Good morning, Sandra. How are you? He greeted the receptionist. Sandra glanced up, glad to see him. Hello, Jonathan. I'm great, but you better watch out. I hear the boss man is looking for you, but I don't think you're in any trouble this time. What do you mean, this time? I never get into trouble, he retorted with a smile. She down, she looked down her nose. <laughs> hey, you're talking to me. That sweet little boy act ain't gonna work around here. Jonathan grinned. You're right, and I better head to my office before I do get into trouble. They shared a laugh uh, while he stepped down the hallway. Entering his office, for some reason, his professional accomplishments flashed through his mind. Unfortunately, it was only a short film. Though he hated to admit it, there was nothing to write home about. His sight was pulled into a bright red envelope sitting on his desk. Could this be a problem? Sometimes a red envelope meant bad news. So he took a deep breath as he ripped it open, only to find it was a sweet surprise. The commission check from a large policy he had recently written, along with a note from his boss. Good job, Jonathan. Keep up the good work. Relief! Jonathan perked right up. He had to share this good fortune with his best friend and co-worker, Matt. <laughs> Without hesitation, he hurried to Matt's office. Even though Matt's door was closed, there was no deterring Jonathan as he rushed in without knocking. Matt heard him barging in and barely glanced up. He was too consumed in a sheet of the lamest business leads he had ever encountered. What do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? I want you to guess what this is, Jonathan replied, fanning the red envelope in the air. Matt showed no interest. I don't know what it is. But I hope it's your termination papers for rushing into my office like a wild animal. Well, if I'm a wild animal, then I'm a lion because this magic envelope contains the commission from a million dollar policy I wrote. Oh, you got lucky. I don't know how you got a thing off those sorry leads. You call it luck, but I call it party time tonight. Then drink a cold beer for me. I could use one right now, if you know what I mean. Then I'll drink too, and don't sweat it. You'll nab a big deal soon. I have to call Lisa, so I'll see you soon. Jonathan sauntered back to his office and dialed a familiar number. After two rings, a sensuous voice filled his ear. Hello, this is Lisa. Hey, pretty lady, how are you? Oh, I'm okay, thanks for asking. What are you doing? Just hanging out at the office, thought I'd call to give you some fabulous news. Guess what happened? Lisa could hear the tone in his voice. There's no telling with you, so tell me. His delivery was smooth as silk. I hope you're ready to have fun. I just got a fat paycheck, so let's play hooky and get naked. <laughs> I can't do that. Why not, he pleaded. Because I have to work. That's no fun. And since I figured that'd be your response, here's my backup plan. Why don't we be adventurous and visit the shopping center tonight? That's a wonderful idea, and since it's so pretty outside, we could go to the Santa Monica Mall. We could even take a walk on the boardwalk first. We haven't done that in a real long time. Sounds good to me, so get ready for a great time. I'll see you after work. Love ya. I love you too, Lisa responded, a smile beaming on her face. The seagulls drifted in the cloudless sky on this warm evening. Hundreds of people crowded the sidewalks as Jonathan and Lisa drove down Main Street, headed to the beach. Lisa stared at the blue sky. It's such a pretty evening for the beach. That's why I'm taking you. I only wish it was a little earlier so you could have worn your new bathing suit. 
oh, you're funny. I don't think seeing you in a sexy bikini is funny. In fact, I think it's a terrific idea. He smiled and turned on the radio. The newscaster was announcing, <clears throat> In this evening's news, terrorist explosions have erupted simultaneously in Baghdad, Saudi Arabia, and Jerusalem, turning all three areas into a bloodbath. The dead have reached 347, with 968 wounded. ISIS claimed responsibility for the bombings. In our local news, two drive-by shootings have claimed four lives, and <laughs> Jonathan turned off the radio, almost shaking his head. What's happening nowadays? It's like the world is getting crazier every day! That's so true. Just like yesterday, a lady from my office was robbed in front of a restaurant. Some man jumped out of nowhere and stuck a butcher knife to her stomach and took all of her money. Oh my god, that's terrible! Did she get hurt? No, she was very lucky. Some people happened to leave the restaurant at the same time and scared the guy away. Wow, that was lucky. You know, it's becoming a full-time job just to be safe anymore. You never know when your number is up. And just like that, some punk can kill you. That's so true! I wish I had an answer, she stated softly. Jonathan was thankful to have Lisa. She gave him hope and direction that made him feel good about himself. There's one thing I know for sure. At least we have each other. Lisa adored the remark. Her man always knew the right words to make her feel better. <clears throat> what am I going to do with you? <clears throat> you? You'd be rich if you knew that answer. I might be... Being fun, being rich might be fun, but what will, we, what will I spend all that money on? The answer is simple. Whatever your heart desires, then you better hold on because the beach is only a couple of blocks away. Jonathan punched the gas and Lisa grabbed the side door handle as their auto zoomed down the street. <laughs> Strolling hand in hand down the boardwalk, Lisa and Jonathan were watching the waves splash on the sand. It's so peaceful. Lisa breathed deeply, loving every bit of the fresh air. And Jonathan nudged her softly. The, sh the sand sure looks inviting. Come on, sweetie. They stepped onto the sand. He kicked off his shoes and dug his toes downward. Oh, this feels marvelous. Take off your shoes. <sighs> Lisa quickly kicked off her shoes and dug her toes into the velvety sand. It felt simply incredible after walking in high heels all day at work. This does feel good. Of course it does. <laughs> I'll never steer you wrong. Now how about walk by the water? And then we'll head down to the mall. Lisa nodded her head joyfully. She loved the affection he delivered. As they moseyed down the beach, the glistening waves captivated her. And another sight stole her attention. A major storm was brewing miles away over the ocean. Ominous, dark clouds were spinning from the inside out. She pointed, look at that storm, Jonathan. Those clouds look like they're actually on fire. Good golly, where on earth did that come from? It was a beautiful, bright blue sky a few seconds ago. He bumped his hip against hers, which made her smile happily. Well, that's out here, out there, and we're right here, so let's enjoy this fine evening. Okay. But as they continued their walk, Lisa started, stared once again at the menacing cloud, <laughs> Jojo menacing <laughs> sign clouds. Um, <laughs> the sight gave her an eerie feeling, making her smile fade into concern. A full moon illuminated the evening sky as Jonathan and Lisa drove towards the, sh the shopping center a parking lot. Unfortunately, fortunately, it didn't take long to find a space. They found one right near the front and parked. Leading, leaning over the console, Jonathan rubbed his hand over her leg. Here we are at the mall, or should I say, the ladies' playground. They shared a laugh while getting out of the vehicle, and he looked at her from head to toe. 
since when were you looking so fine? Uh, since you're looking so fine, it's your fur choice what we do first. Would you like to eat at your favorite Chinese place or do a little shopping? She snuggled beside him. The warmth of his body sent chills surging through her. I want to go shopping. I think that can be arranged. He laced his arm around her waist and they strolled casually into the large glass door. Upon arriving there, Jonathan reached out. Let me open the door for you, milady. Lisa stepped past him, rubbing her body seductively against his. You are being so sweet this evening. There may be some more sugar in store for you later on. There better be because Big Daddy's getting hungry. <laughs> they entered the store radiating joy. After shopping for a brief period, Jonathan picked out a couple of shirts while Lisa chose a bottle of eloquent smelling perfume. They stepped to the sales desk and near, near the front entrance of the store. Jonathan inquired as they placed their things on the counter. Is that all you want? Yes, this is perfect. Okay, just making sure. But perhaps she spoke too soon. Because directly beside their items was a glass display case that contained several strikingly attractive crystal pieces. Lisa's eyes sparkled when she saw one piece in particular, and she opened the case and took it out. A perfectly carved crystal angel. Look, honey, isn't this pretty? It's, it's, it's yeah. Um, the moment Jonathan glanced over, a bright flash from the ceiling lamp shined on the glass object, giving it a radiant glow. That is nice. Can I have it? He smiled and pointing his right finger to his cheek. I'll make a deal with you. Plant one right here and it's yours. I'll take that deal. She remarked and kissed him gladly. And she stared at the angel. Words flowed from her lips. This can be our guardian angel. If that makes you happy. Suddenly, a loud commotion erupted at the back of the store. A salesperson screamed, Help! Stop those thieves! Jonathan looked up. The danger was approaching. What the... Before he could... Before he had a second to react, 20 young hoodlums were running towards them, carrying armfuls of merchandise. It was a smashing grab free-for-all. And they were in the pathway of the um, approaching mob. As the thieves ran to the front door, one bumped into Jonathan, knocking him off balance. Jonathan staggered slightly, but swiftly regained his footing. Stop, you punks! He hollered, and then saw another kid running directly at him. Jonathan was quick, lowered his shoulder, preparing for contact. And then, the precise moment, he rammed full force into the thief's chest like a linebacker crashing through a defensive line, except... The blow inadvertently threw the assailant straight into Lisa. The une unexpected contact hurled Lisa backwards, flinging the crystal angel out of her hand. It spun high into the air. The crystal piece plummeted and smashed into a tiny, into, into a thousand slivers. <laughs> Outside, the, a change exploded in the atmosphere. Almost instantly, bolts of lightning pierced the sky as thunder quivered the evening. A flood of clouds rolled in, twisting and tumbling over the horizon, suffocating the stars and full moon like a killer choking the life from its victims. The street lamps were swallowed by the haze, leaving the world in darkness.